our scripture to Our scripture today is from the Common English Bible, uh, the third chapter of Luke, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. The people were filled with expectation and everyone wondered whether John might be the Christ. John replied to them all, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to lo loosen the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The shovel he use, uses to sift the wheat from the husks is in his hands. He will clean out his threshing area and bring the wheat into his barn, but he will burn the husks with a fire that cannot be put out. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus was also baptized. While he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven. You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you, I find happiness. Thank you, Steve. As you may have gotten from my little conversation with um, the children today, I really do enjoy baptism. I really do enjoy, as an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ, being able to share in that wonderful celebration, in that magic moment of baptism. And baptism at Westminster is celebrated in a, a variety of ways. Some of you who have been here a while may recall some of those different ways. So, for instance, like with Annie or Anna, the two, are they both six? So Annie and Anna, Annie who was on Zoom this morning, and Anna who lives in Montana, were both here as babies and got baptized on the same Sunday. It was August. And, oh, and Gus. Oh, my gosh, Gus, who's now living in California. Holy cow. And we baptized those babies very gently, very carefully, poured a little bit of water over their little soft heads, and used this beautiful baptismal basin. But baptism isn't always that way at Westminster. Last summer, some of you were here when we baptized my grandson, Christian, who um, has some interesting eye difficulties, and who was therefore very afraid of being tipped or moved, and of water. So even though his family wanted to have him baptized, we actually put him in a kiddie pool that was dry, okay? And then we carefully poured a little bit of water first on his hands and on his feet. I think he was wearing shorts, so I may have dribbled a little bit of water on his legs, and then I put it carefully, carefully on the back of his head so that he wouldn't scream with fear. But still, there was water, there was light, there was blessing, and it was baptism at Westminster in a kiddie pool. We've also done this at Westminster. Some of you may remember the baptism of Faith Villardo and her dad, Mark Villardo. It was deep in the summer, and we went down to the Spokane River to the drop-in right below the T.J. Minock Bridge, where lots of kayaks and rafts go in. And I went in, and they went in, and we, yes, we did, I dumped, dunked them three times into the Spokane in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And it was gold. And we were very wet, but it was fantastic. I remember the baptism of Rowan Jeske. Rowan was just a little girl then, and we were at camp, at Camp in Sidson. And it was warm. Lake Coeur d'Alene was perfect temperature. 
And I believe her mommy and I took her into the shallows right there near the swimming beach at camp. Everybody in swimsuits. And we baptized her there. So baptism is wonderful and a celebration and it's not one size fits all. Usually when a baptism is celebrated at Westminster, everybody who, rem who has been baptized is invited to renew their baptismal promises as well. And then sometimes, and this is also fun, at Westminster we take that baptismal water and we sprinkle everybody with it. How many of you remember that in years past I had helpers like Tavita and Francis and I gave them some water and I gave them some greens and I said now go shake this on everybody and boy were they enthusiastic. <laughs> you see it makes you laugh. It's a, baptism is a happy occasion. Especially if you have preteens shaking water all over you. Baptism should be a big deal. Usually with a baptism at Westminster, afterwards, we have a cake downstairs. And often, when we baptize the children and the babies, and we parade them around the entire sanctuary so everyone can touch them and bless them on their little heads. Baptism should be a big deal. It should be a celebration. And why is that? Jesus and many others received baptism from John. Jesus did it. So the early Christians said, let's do it. Let's do this special celebration. Let's mark this moment of blessing. In the early days of the Christian church, baptism was actually celebrated only at Easter. And the preparation for that momentous occasion included fasting and prayers and study before that early Easter morning cold plunge into water. It was a big deal for them too, but why? Why? Because, now I'm going to give you my understanding of baptism. Because can you tell I sort of love it? But Christians of every kind, for the thousands of years that we have called ourselves Christians, recognize baptism as coming into the church universal. For most of the history of baptism, baptisms were held surrounded by the church or inside the church in the midst of a service, as we do here. Sometimes you'll find people baptized at the doors of the church to welcome them in symbolically. Sometimes, as we do here, the baptismal font, the pulpit, and then the communion table all hold pride of place and are all linked together. When you are baptized, you are baptized into the church of Jesus Christ. And everywhere Christians are baptized, let's be clear, they are baptized into the entirety of Christendom. Most churches will accept your baptism no matter where you were baptized because we recognize that all baptism brings us into the one church of Jesus Christ. You're not baptized into Westminster or Our Lady of Lourdes down the street or Salem Lutheran in the West Central neighborhood. When Faith and her dad were baptized, when Annie and Anna and Gus were baptized, when Christian was baptized, he was baptized, they were baptized into the ancient truth of the church around the world. Of course, also, when all of them were baptized, there were deacons there. There were friends there. I think uh, Vern brought most of the choir down to the river and we sang, shall we gather at the river or something like that. So yes, 
the local faith family is there as well to celebrate with you and to welcome you in. But you are welcomed into Christ's church, not Westminster. We are, all of us, when we are baptized, we become members of a large, large adopted family. Through our adoption, through Jesus, we say that he is now our brother and God is our parent and we are God's children together. And because of that, when a child is baptized, you should not, and I don't think you will at Westminster, you will never hear me say, I baptize you Christian Castro Lang in the name of the creator, the sustainer, and the redeemer. You will hear me say, I baptize you Christian, or Annie, or Gus. That last name that delineates who your people are, who your clan is, what your social standing is in the community, that is not important because now you are adopted, adopted into the faith and family of Jesus our Christ. <laughs> our siblings are now everywhere. They are Ghanaian and Cuban and German and Lebanese. They are from, they are from everywhere. And they are trans and they are bi, they're queer, they are young, they're old, they're professors, they're mechanics, they're students, they're tiny babies. They're they are our family. They are family. Yet another reason for baptism to be a big deal. But we also recognize in this most ancient rite of the church, the Christian church, that baptism is understood as a, a new start and a direction for your life. In fact, it can be a focus of hope that will guide you your entire life long. Baptism, we say, is a sign of God's love for us. God's mercy and forgiveness given to us freely. Some of us reaffirm our baptismal promises often because we need to be reminded again and again that no matter how dumb and hurtful and blind and selfish we are, we're still forgiven. We're still loved. Baptism, we say, is God's gift to us. It is not earned. You don't have to fight for the right to be baptized. It is God giving God's generous, loving self first. Which is why baptism, Charles Wesley, I love that guy. He's the founder of Methodism. And Charles Wesley, I don't know, maybe he was a really enthusiastic guy. He said, never stop anyone from receiving at the table. And if they're not baptized, well, okay, have some communion together, then go get baptized and then do it again. You think he was kind of enthusiastic? I think so. So baptism is this gift, and it should never be withheld by people. It is God's gift, and we're called to share it. Now, water is pretty crucial in baptism. Sometimes in the historic past of the church, they literally put a couple of drops on your forehead. And certainly with my grandson Christian and his fear of water, I tried not to freak him out with too much water where it would bug him or make him frightened. But water is important. And so splashing water and pouring water and, and 
flowing water and rivers of water and oceans of water are all important to baptism. Thus, the Spokane River, thus Lake Coeur d'Alene, and thus so many churches that have large fonts where you simply go all the way in and then come out again. I could wish that we had one of those. We don't. We have that. But water reminds us that since the beginning of creation, in the first creation story, it is water that God breathes over. And it is water that nurtures each and every human being in the womb for nine months. And it is water that you cannot live without as a human being. Water is life-giving. So yes, baptism needs water. Okay, you think I should be done, right? I'm not. Me and baptism. Not yet. So, talking about water, talking about fonts, baptismal pools, some of them are big and round, right? Um, if you go into Baptist churches and Disciples of Christ churches, they have big pools you walk into with the minister and then walk out of again. Some fonts are round like this. Some fonts are ornately carved, and even their shape is powerful. There is an eight-sided baptismal font, and that is to remind you of the seven days of creation and the eighth day, the resurrection. A whole new way of keeping time. I had to go to seminary to learn that, and it just wowed me. Can you tell? How about this? Fonts in the shape of the Trinity. How about this? Fonts in the shape of a coffin. And you're like, ew. Or at least I went, ew, the first time I heard about that. But it is a very common shape. Because... When we are baptized, we say we die to our old selves and we rise to new life. Our Easter promise, we rise to new life with Christ. And you rise up out of that font, wet and dripping and washed and new. Pretty awesome, right? Or not? Am I the only one who's geeking out on this? Come on. So yes, okay, one more time, I'm going to tell you, baptism is a big deal, is a wonderful big deal. Baptism should be, can be, must be a big deal at Westminster. But this is one thing, I speak from the United Church of Christ tradition, I speak very clearly from that tradition I want to share with you one thing that baptism in our tradition should never be, should never be understood as that which saves you from hell. No one, for any reason, should push to be baptized because they fear hell. Or, Pastor, you've got to baptize my baby because if you don't and they're sick and they die, they'll go to hell. Friends, baptism is not a magic talisman against a vengeful God. Nor is it some bizarre mark that protects babies from some demon-haunted world. No, no. This is a very sad and terrible misunderstanding of the gift of baptism. And I'm telling you this so that you'll understand the big deal of baptism is because it celebrates God's love, God's welcome, God's embrace. It celebrates that Jesus is our brother and our teacher and our friend and our Lord our saving one. 
baptism celebrates an inclusive and generous and creative and life-giving God. Baptism celebrates the welcome of Jesus to follow the Jesus way. And yes, to find companions for the journey of walking that Jesus way, to find workers to help you as together we work to heal the world, to find friends to strengthen you when the journey is hard, and dear ones to celebrate with you and help multiply your joy on the way as Jesus followers baptized in his name, baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit, baptized in the name of the creator God who loves us. That, my friends, is why baptism is a big deal. Amen. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise.